this happen? Okay, let's take this example, guy, guys, if you don't mind. And um, this is a, an easier example. You have in front of you. I have a, a 48277 on the primary and a 28120 on the secondary side. Um, I have main panel. 48277 on the primary, transformer, receptacle panel, RP receptacle panel on the secondary side with an overcome friction device for the receptacle panel, a cable to come to the receptacle panel, um, as well as, of course, the feeders to feed the transformer from the 48277 panel and the circuit breaker. This is very typical, guys, if you have a system 48277. And you need, very typical in every building, you have a 48277 building and you need to feed um, a receptacle. So how are you going to feed it from 48277? You have most 99% of the time you're going to have a transformer. They call it receptacle transformer. Okay, so this is really typical. One more time. I have a 48277 panel, main panel. I call it MP, main panel, feeding a receptacle panel, right? At 28120, because receptacles in the US, we run them at 120, through a transformer, because you have to, you have to have a transformer. Um, I have the transformer that I have already sized, is 75 kVA. I need to size the panel that goes with it, and I need to size the conductors that feed the transformer, the overcome friction device on the primary, the overcome friction device in the secondary, and the cables between the transformer and the panel. This is a special, very interesting situation, guys, where you get also involved in, in the tab rule, transformer tab rule. Very, very important because it, it gets involved in the tab rule. D stands for the distance equal or less than 25. So the main panel and the, the, the second panel are no more than 25 feet away from each other. Very important. Otherwise, you have to do some other analysis. So this is the rule. And most of the time, guys, what you what we do is we have the transformer, the 48277 panel on this wall, transformer sitting on the floor, and the 270 and, and 28120 panel right there, right? You grab the feeder from the 480 into the transformer, out of the transformer into the other panel. 99% of the time, and they are within 25 feet. Why 25 feet? I'm going to show you the tab rules. The tab, there is tab rules of 10 and tab rules of 25. Typically, 25 feet is the tab rule that we use with a transformer. Okay, any question about the scenario that we have? Any question about the scenario? If you want to do a, a riser for this, it would probably look something like this. It would look like a panel here a transformer on the floor, and another panel here. And you have a cable going from here to here, from here to here. This will be my my main panel, this will be my receptacle panel, and this will be my Mr. Transformer. This is on the wall, looking at it on the wall. That's what we're looking, looking at it on the wall. Cool. And the distance, the cable distance from here to the transformer all the way back is 25 feet or less. That's not hard to get 25 feet or less. So probably you end up with eight foot from here to here, eight foot from here to here, um, and a transformer distance. And so it's not hard to get 25 feet. Why 25 feet? I'm going to show you why. Because the code, if you have 25 feet or less, they allow you to do certain things that you cannot do if the, if you don't have 25 feet. If I grab this panel here and move it 100 feet away. I have to put to do to design it differently. If you do it this way, here's what you need. All what you need is just a circuit breaker in the first panel feeding the transformer, and a circuit breaker on the second panel. And there is no fuses or circuit breaker anywhere here or anywhere here. The two circuit breakers are sitting inside the panels. That's why the 25. The great thing about the 25, you don't have to have a fuse next to the transformer. The fuse or the circuit breaker are inside the panels. The means of the panels are your fuse or transformers. That's why we like it. Mm -hmm. 
the code, the change in 2011 said the code, the uh, transformers have to have a disconnect within sight. Within sight means 50 feet or less and no obstacles. So, yeah, the act circuit breaker here will act as your, circuit, your disconnect because with, if it's 25, uh, it is within sight. Yes, you have to have a dis in 2011. 2011. If you if the transformer goes through a floor, uh, say this panel is here and this transformer is a different floor, you have to have it begin. 2011. 2008 was not. So if you haven't seen it, uh, I, if you pull the permit in Minnesota, if you pull the permit for a job after August 8th, of this year, this rule applies. It goes by the when do you when did you pull the permit for that job? August 8th of, 10 or August of 2011. 11. That's when we oh, adopted the code. Year. Yeah, last year, August 8th of 2011. If you pull the permit for the job, not when you design it. it, goes by when did you start the construction? Pull the permit to start the construction. Okay, any question guys about the scenario? Why 75? Here's how we find the 75. Um, man, remember how we calculated the receptacle panel? You guys remember this receptacle? We added volt amp for 180 volt amp for all the receptacles, then we derated blah, blah, blah. And we came up, say, we came up with 63 uh, kVA. The next standard is 75. Okay? And the next standard 70, uh, transformers, guys, are in ugly. Um, Transformers. Okay, so they are. So this applies to our project. This is applies to the project. Well, not this time. Next project, definitely. We don't have a panel like this. We have a, a we have a panel. Next next quarter will be exactly the same. We have a 480 system. You need to uh, size the panel fit from it, from the 480 system. Single phase transformer. Okay. The sizes of the transformers, guys, is seven. If anybody want to go the transformer sizes, where would that where would I get something like this? This is from DeWalt. DeWalt standard sizes. Three phase, of course. Um, size, three phase transformer, seven dash seven. DeWalt seven dash seven. If you guys go there, it will tell you seventy-five is a respected industry standard transformer. So you do your math. You did the calculation, you end up with, for example, if I end up with 55 kVA load because of my calculation, if you look here, your option are 45 or 75. If I have 55, where do you think I'm going to go? 75. Okay, everybody knows why I came up with the 75? All right, let's go size. Let's go size things for this transformer, guys. The first thing as I need to do for this transformer the first thing I need to do is reset. So I have, yeah, let me just go over what, what, what I need to do. I need to find the, this number one is the cover, like uh, Todd was talking yesterday, the size of the panel, not the overcompetition device in it, the size of the panel itself, copper, and we're going to get it from DeWalt, the size of the cover. That's number one. Number two is the size of the overcompetition device inside the panel, the main. Number Three is the feeder that feeds that panel that's coming out of the transformer. And number, number four is the feeder that feeds the transformer. And five is the overcompetition device that protect the transformer on the secondary side. Cool? Everybody knows what? Side? On the primary side. Can you get back to the distribution? It's longer than 25 feet. No. This connect is different than the 25 feet. In 2011, the code says, said every power transformer, not control transformer, not these little ones on the wall. Yeah. These are control. Power transformers must have a disconnect on the primary side of the transformer. On the primary side, on the primary side of the transformer, that disconnect must be within sight of the transformer. If it's not within sight of the transformer, then you have to do two things. That that disconnect must be able to be locked in the open position. So you have to have a means of locking it in the open position. Number two, you have to label the transformer with the location of the disconnect. That's 2011. So if this transformer is in that room, and that panel is in this room, they're not within sight of each other. 
then I have to, the, the this, it has to have some time of being able to be locked, lock it in the open position for safety when I work on it. And then I have to go right, right here on the transformer, transformer feeder located in MP um, room uh, 10 uh, closet, red 10 closet. So within sight is defined as no obstacles, you don't have to climb over, under, and no more than 50 feet distance. Uh, 450, it's uh, 450 dot, here, uh, 450.14, page uh, 352. Don't you guys believe me anymore? What, you just go to the holidays and you, you eat a lot and you start uh, down, you start being down in commas here? So 450.14, disconnect. Okay. In my case, that circuit trigger is going to act as a disconnect within 25 feet. You can see no obstacles, so I'm, I'm good to go with this. All right, let's go ahead and size. The first thing I'm going to size, guys, is receptacle panel. Here's how we size the receptacle panel. Um, I want to take the prime I primary equal. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I secondary. I'm looking at number one. I secondary of the transformer. Secondary of the transformer. You take the 75K. Cache 1.73. All these are three phase guys, and the secondary voltage is 208. And if you do the math of this baby, it gives you 208 amps. 208 amps. Done. Two hundred eight amps. Okay. Then, remember, one is the panel size, not over competition device. Then here's how I would do it. Then you take the 208, take it all the way to DeWalt. DeWalt 3-12. I don't multiply it by 1.25, guys, because the 1.25 is already factored in the size of the transformer. So when I size my transformer, the continuous load, I already factored it in. When I came up with 75, that includes the continuous load, non-continuous, all multiplied by 1.25, and I came up with this size of a transformer that I need, already factored in. Everybody knows why I did not multiply by 1.25, because the when I came up with this size of this transformer, I took the volt amp for all my receptacles, derated them, and if I have a couple of lights coming from the receptacle panel, because they're continuous multiplied by 1.25, get the continuous load taken care of in the load calculation. Okay, if you guys go to this, uh, the next standard is uh, 225. Remember, it's three phase, three phase, four wire. My next size is either 200, 225. What's, uh, I need 208, so my next standard is 225 amps. That's the bus inside the panel, the guts, is the couple. The, the, yeah, the panel rating, absolutely. The cover panel rating. Okay. So the second thing that I want to do, guys, is find the overcompetition device. So I found what the panel is going to be located. Now my overcompetition device, the same thing. I'm going to use um, my overcompetition device. I'm going to use the 208. 208, don't multiply by anything. I'm going to take it to 240.6. Different table. And this time, if you guys go there, I have 225 amps. I have just hit the jackpot, right? It's the same. The panel matches. The panel rating matches the overcompetition device rating. It doesn't have to be. Usually, either match it or the overcompetition device is less. It can't be more, though. It has to be less. 225. So my overcompetition device is 225. My panel is 225. Everything is 225. Cool. Okay. Now let's go do the secondary conductors. We need to find the secondary the secondary conductors of the transformer, which is in reality it's the feeder for the panel. See how they are? It's kind of tied between the transformer. These conductors number three is secondary of the transformer, and at the same time a feeder of a panel. 
a theta over 10. That's where it's slightly different calculation that we've done for a transformer. Can I go to number three, guys? No, yes? Okay, so if you go to number three, secondary conductors or RP feeder, right? Can you guys see that? I want to make sure everybody can see the picture. This is a secondary of a conductor and a feeder of a panel at the same time. So we have to take these two into consideration, not just secondary of a conductor. Okay? So in a case like this, only in a case like this, here's what I would do. Match the overcurrent protection device. Why? Why don't I have multiplied by 1.25? Because you're feeding a panel. You're feeding a panel. You need your panel cables to be equivalent to the overcurrent protection device. So I would say here, match overcurrent protection device. What was the overcurrent protection device on the secondary 225 amp? If you take it to V10.15 B16 under 75 degree column, right? Uh, remember, it's a, it's a Y, and I decided Chad carried it single-handedly to carry full neutral. I want to pull a full neutral. I don't want to derail. So I have four conductors, four out, if you guys go, A, W, G, T, H, H, N. Most likely, that's what you're going to end up with. THHN, why THHN, your indoor dry location? Um, why 4 out? Yeah, Nick is verifying that it's going to be 4 out to carry 225. Yeah. 75 degree column. 75 degree column. 75. We cannot use the 90. Uh, um, uh, yeah, you still think you're medium voltage. Yeah, still no, or medium voltage. In the low voltage, as in hot, lower than 600, we only use 75 guys. Well, we use 60, but in 99% of the time in, in a three-phase system, you're stuck with 75. 90 is only for your rating. Make sense if it's 75, Nick? Okay. Okay, so the question would be is why didn't I multiply by 1.25? Why did, because I would have met, it's, it, it has dual function. It's, this one is a secondary of a conductor and at the same time a primary, uh, a feeder of a panel. I would have matched the two. What I would do is I match the overcompetition device of that panel so I can get the full cable of that panel. Okay, so that now we did. Now we, if you guys look at this, I have my panel 225 amp, 225 amp overcompetition device, and also 225 amp cable, which is for us. All matched on the secondary, you match them all together. Especially the overcompetition device and the feeder. Okay. Let's go to the primary conductor. The primary conductor, that piece of cake, you take I primary divided by the 75K, 1.73 times the primary is 480. I'm going to remind you it's a 480. If you do this, you end up with 90M, 90M, 90M. Now, here is why I don't multiply this by 1.25. A lot of people, you, you might have to multiply this by 1.25. Remember how we did it in the primary? Here's why I don't multiply by 1.25. Because you can. By the way, you can multiply it now by 2.5. I don't multiply it because when we calculated the transformer, the 775 kVA, I factored in the continuous load in that particular size. For example, I took the continuous load, multiplied it by 1.25, uh, and the non-continuous load, 100%, add them all up. I came up with 55 kVA. What's my next standard? 75. So do, I don't need to multiply again. It's already factored in. Well, you're going to find a lot of people, guys, probably at Michelle, too, is they multiply this number by 1.25, too. I don't. So 90 degree. So I'll take the 90 degree, then, directly, 90 amp. And take it to 310.15 B16 under 75 degree column. Now it's less than 100 amp, right? So some of you will say, Chad, why did you go to 75? 99% of the time, if you're dealing with three phase, the lugs are rated for 75. If you read the code, it says, if you know that the lugs are 75, then use 75. I, I'm telling you, if you're using the three phase system, the lugs are rated for 75. Okay, so. I go default to the 75. What's the size? And how many? It's a delta. So how many conductors in the primary? Three. So three conductors. 
number two and under under uh, 75 number three okay under 75 number three all right 75 number three Seventy five, number three. And what's um, th, uh, THHN? Because we're still in dry location. Um, um, a W A W G T H H N. Why three? Because it's a delta. I don't need a neutral on the delta. There is no neutral. Number three. Now, Rob, is it wrong if you multiply this by 1.25 and size? No. The, ch the problem is we end up oversizing things because we already went up to find the standard transform and then we already went up to, you know what I mean? <laughs> we already went up by multiplying 1.25 for the continuous load and then we couldn't find the standard so we jumped up again. So. Okay, so that's my secondary. I don't want you guys to say, well, Chad, you multiply it before by 1.25, right? That wasn't for a panel, though. That was a, a whole complete different system. We didn't have a, like, this is a special scenario for it. Okay, let's go to the overcompetition device, guys. Primary. The primary, this will be 450.3D. Primary overcompetition device. Um, do I have a secondary overcompetition device on the secondary of the transformer? Yeah, right? If you guys go to the table that we were just talking about uh, uh, here. Uh, all the way to my um, 450. It's a smaller transformer, 450 Chad. Okay. There you go. Transformer 100. Parameter, what? I don't want 100. Okay. So we go to B. Why B? Because everybody knows why we went to B. B because both of the transformers, uh, the primary and secondary, are less than uh, 60, uh, 600. So here's my default primary only protection, primary and secondary. Do I have some type of a fuser circuit breaker somewhere on the secondary of the transformer? Yeah, I have it in the panel. So I default here. Then the primary protection, um, current of nine amps or more. Do I have nine amps or more on the primary? Yeah, so that's my default, 99% of the time. Here's my multiplier. On the secondary side, here's my secondary side. Uh, do I have more than nine amps? Yeah, more than nine amps. My default is what then? 1.25. Now, I didn't use this. I did not use this one on the secondary because I sized it based on the panel. Uh, but on the primary, I will be using this multiplier. I want to remind you guys there is a note number three. And if you read note number three, it doesn't see anywhere where you have to go up if you don't hit the standard. If you read it right here, it talks about uh, thermally protected transformers. This is not one of them. So, so if you don't pay that, uh, there is no note number one here. Not number three only, no not number one. So does that mean if you don't pay the trans, uh, uh, standard, what do you need to do? To go down. Okay. So we get that one. Go back. And um, so, okay. So now my friends is the primary overcompetition device. Then I will take my 90 amps, right? Here's my 90 amps, multiplied by, what was it, 2.5? 2.5, what would that give me? Do I have the answer for Right on the money? Okay, primary over device, 225. 200, 25 amps, wow, 225 amps, right on the money. Okay, so then, of course, um, if it's not a standard, you're going to take it to 240.6, and we hit, we happen to hit a standard, so 225 amp, and go down here. If it's not a standard, what do you need to do? Go down. We happen to hit a standard, so we're not going to go down. 225. 225 amp.
225. Okay. 225. You verify that 225. I'm sorry? Nothing. I said you call us doubting promises. No. I um yeah, I just want to because my number are wrong. I don't know why. Oh. Yeah, I just want to verify myself. Okay, you're right. You're absolutely I'm wrong. Okay. It's a what? Doubting curtain. Doubting curtain. Okay, uh, primary architecture device, we sized it, 225. Okay, so now we sized everything, guys. I want somebody to carry these numbers with me and give it to me, will you? So I'm going to go all the way to my transformer, back to my transformer, and I'm going to write these just for the heck of it, write them here. So I know my panel, my, this was 225 amp. My panel was 225 amp. My conductors were, were they 4 out? Yeah. 4 out. Conductors were 4 out. On the secondary side, I have 225 amp, and my conductors were number 3. Okay? We got everything that we need. We got everything that we need. There's one little thing, though, left. One little thing. If this panel is 10 feet away from this transformer, do you think this part of the conductor, where is the secondary protection of this part? They're really not, the, the overcapitation device is not right at the terminal of the transformer, like we did before. It's far away, slightly far. That's where this um, rule, B, the distance rule becomes very, very powerful. I'm going to show you. So we're done. We're done. But we're going to verify why this is right. We're going to verify why this is right, even though we don't have any secondary here. There's nothing here on the secondary. So that's based on the rule. Let's go back. Okay. All right, so uh, you guys have this one. Here's what I would like you to do. Um, let's just go to 240.21b right in here. Uh, 240.21b. Uh, I'm going to go quick uh, with you to 240.20b and highlight this one. Will you feel me? One time, and then we're good. 240.21b. Uh, Come on, Chad. Article 240, 220.20. For B, um, okay, 21B. All right, there you go, 240.21B. Uh, um, which B of them? We said this one, B2, right? B2. Taps, not over 25 long for transformers. I need right here, three. Taps, applying a transformer, primary plus secondary. Um, so what I would like you guys to, this is, by the way, this is in page 93, in NEC code book, page 93. I would like you guys, please, to highlight this tab, very, very interesting tab. Uh, Mark, highlight it. Uh, where's my highlighter? I want you guys, please, to highlight this, this tab. Cool? Everybody got that tab? A few things about this tab. So this is exactly what we have. If you read it, it says, tab supplying transformer. Primary plus secondary, not over 25 feet long. That's exactly the scenario that we have, right? Remember that I said 25 or less, equal or less to 25? Okay, if you have this situation, here's what you need to do. Number one, the conductor size, can you see it says conductors, uh, primary, conductor size, primary, cannot be at least, at least one third of the over contraction device on the primary. This is very interesting. It says the primary, the conductor on the primary cannot be less than one third of the over competition device on the primary side, the primary conductors. We're going to do this math. The second one, conductors on the secondary, I don't know if you guys conductors, secondary, right? Okay, secondary. Um, the ambicity shall not be less than the primary to secondary ratio multiplied by the over contraction device of the primary. So you take the ratio, voltage ratio, multiply it by the primary over contraction device, and take one third of it. That's right in here. And then the length, of course, here's the length cannot be more than 25. The total length cannot be more than 25. We, we already did that. 
And of course, the secondary and the primary, you have to put them in a conduit, which we easy to do. You have to put them in a raceway, rigid EMT, PVC. And um, the secondary conductor terminate in a single, and the secondary conductor have to terminate in a single circuit breaker. Do, you have, do we have this scenario, Chris? No. Didn't we terminate the secondary conductor in a single circuit breaker in a panel? That's what we did, right? So we met the criteria of the 25-foot tap on a transformer. So I want you guys to highlight this is very, very interesting one, the 25-foot tap. Cool? Now, all the information I'm going to show you is coming directly from that particular one. Any question guys about this? Any questions? So if you do me a favor and you do yourself, highlight that baby here for future references. And, uh, and I'm just doing it so I can take a snapshot of it. And get out of here, and off it goes. Okay, so we got them. This is where I want to go review these rules. Now, based on this, here's the rules that we have. And I need to I need to do some changes because I made a mistake. I need to do some changes. The overcome detection device here, what was it? 225 amp. The overcome detection device here, 225 amp. The conductor size here, what was it? Number three, I made a mistake here. Number three, number four, so we're cool. Now, the tab rules, here's where we were, 240.21B3, right? Here's what the rule is. It's a conductor, can you just see C1? Here's where C1 is. C1 is the conductor on the primary. Conductor on the primary must be equal or more to a third of the overcaptation device on the primary. Here's the overcaptation device on the primary. Here's the conductor on the primary. The tab says the conductor has to be more or less, more or equal to one third of this to qualify it as a 25 foot rule. Okay, let's still go to the map. Take this. This is the take. Do the map here. So I need you guys to give me because mine. I know mine is wrong because I my calculation here is wrong. So um, I want to do the map right in here together. Let's go do that. Um, what is what is the what is the ambicity of number three under seventy five? The ambicity of number three. How much amp number three can carry under seventy five? Can anybody give me number three under seventy five? Number three under seventy five, a hundred amp, right? Right, a hundred amp. So this is this is a hundred amp. Now is the hundred amp more or equal? It has to be more or equal to one third. Multiplied by what's the overcome picture device on this side? 225. What's one third of 225? Um, 225 divided by 3 equal 75. Right? So 100 is more or equal to 75. Is that true? M. Is that true? Right? Yes. Then we met the criteria for the tap. If that was wrong, if that was wrong, suppose that this was, suppose that I came up with, instead of 100 here, 60. You know what you need to do? You need to up the conductor size to use this rule. Does that make sense? One more time. The conductor size, which is 100, based on the conductor that I used, must be equal or more. More is better than one-third. Why one-third? Because you saw the code says one-third. Oh, the overcam fiction device on the primary. Go. Here's overcam 225. One third of 225 is 75, right? 75. Uh, 100 is more than 75, so we're good. So that we're checked. We checked good here. So I'm going to say good. We're done. We're done on the primary. So we met the criteria on the primary. Let's do the criteria on the secondary. There's a criteria on the secondary side. On the secondary side is slightly confusing. On the secondary side is slightly confusing. Oops. Uh, on the secondary side, guys, is slightly confusing. So I'm gonna go. Let's do go do it together here. I'm gonna erase it and do it together. Okay, here's this first rule. You guys are looking at it. It says on the secondary side, C2. C2 is the conductor on the secondary side. Phil, right here must be from the code more or equal to the ratio of the voltage. Why the ratio? It says the ratio. 
of the voltage multiplied by one third of the overcome pressure device on the primary. Do you know why they do it this way, guys? Because these conductors, these conductors right here, are not protected by this overcome pressure device. They're protected by the one on the primary side. A conductor can be protected by overcome pressure device if the overcome pressure device is ahead of the conductor. If it's if it's not ahead of a conductor, it's not protecting it, right? You agree that these, this section of the conductor here, not here, here, is ahead of the overcompression device. The only one that's going to protect it is that baby here. That's why they use the overcompression device. So this is directly from the code. The conductor here cannot be, it has to be all, more or equal to the ratio of the voltage multiplied by one third of the overcompression device. Let's go do it. If the 225 breaks, the current flow through the wire and the system is pretty clear. If there is a short circuit right here, that's what we're trying to predict. There is a short circuit right here. Which one is going to break? Oh. That guy. So you're protecting against a short circuit of the Yes. Computer. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Or ground fault. Overloading, it's highly unlikely that somebody's going to go tap from this conductor and feed. You can't overload it. Unless you can overload it here, and then this will take care of that. But from short circuit, this would short easily or yeah, ground fault. Somebody cuts through the cable. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be natural selection. Okay, what's the four out? How much current can a four out from 250.310.15? 310.15B16. Uh, four out. Four out can get me directly 230. So I have 230 amps. Must be equal or more than. Okay, let's take the voltage. What's the primary voltage? 480 divided. Oops, 480 divided. I'm going to do it here so I can have enough room with the whole calculation here. So I have um, 230 amps. Give myself all the space. 230 amps more or equal to, right? This is 200 for the 4 watt. 230 amps for the 4 watt. Must be equal to the voltage. Here's a 480. Divide by 208. Multiplied by a third. Multiplied by the over completion device 225 amps. Let's do the math on that. So let's take, uh, which is basically 75, 75 uh, divided by 208 multiplied by 480. I came up with 173. Anybody came up with 170? This will, so is 230 amp more or equal to 173.1 amp is that true for equation yep right good then if that's true then we are good if if this was 160 guess what we need to do you need to go to the next standard and from four out you're going to go to 250 and check again did i do it wrong is the math right Anybody verify the math? So 173, right? 230 is more than 173. Yeah, we're good to go based on the tab rule. Then this, these conductors, and again, we're really concerned about these here, this section of the conductor and this section, plus the winding plus. This section of the cables and this section it are only protected by the primary if you have a short circuit. The second, they wouldn't even wake up. Yes, sir. Yeah, could be inside the transformer, you mean? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If you have a. Yep. Yeah. Where's the 230 come? Where's 230? Oh, 230. This is. Thank you. Uh, this one, this number is coming from 4 at AWG conductor size. So 310.15B16 under 75 degree column. That's how much 4 amp can carry. The same thing, guys, with the 100 amp here. Where did the 100 amp came from? The 100 amp is number three. Yeah. Number three conductors. And number four conductors. And number four out conductors. These are these numbers. If I meet this criteria, then I met the criteria of I have an overcompetition device that's protecting the, the circuit, um, protecting the 
transformer. And then, by the way, I'm showing only one winding of the transformer here. It's a three-phase. I'm only showing one part. If you do this, then your conductors are fully protected from short-circuit ground fault, and your transformer is fully protected from short-circuit and ground faults. I know my transformer is because I picked this one from 250.3a, right? That's what they tell me to use. But I wanted to check if my conductors are protected by this rule, by this rule. Any question, guys? That's it. So the, the, the tab rule check is really the only to, you don't need to do that. I'm just going to verify it for myself. Why did I do what I did? So what I personally, when I size this system, guys, which is, Ashley, you're going to see this one 90% of a commercial industrial building. 90% of the time we have, a, a, we call it receptacle transformer. If you size it the way I size it, 99.9% .9 of the time you will meet the criteria of the tab. Tab criteria. Any question, my friends? Anybody has any question? And because uh, you guys are doubting uh, Kyrgyz, like uh, Chris said, here's where you got the information for the transformer from. We went there. And where did we get the information? And here's where we got the information for the tabs, directly from here. And that's all I have for you today. Good timing. I want to remind you guys that you need to print your riser with your schedule today. I'll be around to help you with the riser and the schedule. I wanted to do some uh, mechanical equipment layout and circuiting. I think it's not a... Uh, I can't do it individually, but I will walk you through this next time. Make sure you have the two softwares that I gave you. Uh, William, I'll give it to you to download it. So you can download these so two softwares because next week we're going to be working with these babies. Thank you.